to Rochelle Martin. Some of us knew her as a colleague, some of us knew her as a teacher, some of us knew her as a friend. She was a devoted teacher. Uh, she wanted to work until the last moment, and in fact worked until the last moment before she went into the hospital. Uh, she planned to actually return in January. She was very hopeful that she could do that. Uh, she loved her students greatly and did not want to be separated from her students. We all knew that. Today we'll be, we will be joined by faculty, administrators, students, and alumni who have prepared statements of tribute to Rochelle. Uh, you'll notice the last item on the agenda today are statements uh, from anyone from the audience. All can participate. Uh, if you would like to add anything to the, to the discussion and the tribute to Rochelle. So be thinking about that if you'd like to do that. So I'd like to call now on our first speaker, Professor Jim Stevens. Hello. Um, I'm honored today to represent the faculty uh, by reading Rochelle's bio, and then a brief uh, letter that we received. Uh, Dr. Rochelle Martin passed away on October 8, 2011. Dr. Martin has been with Lawrence Tech since 1986 and was a professor in the College of Architecture and Design and graduated uh, uh, as a graduate and undergraduate levels. Uh, professor Martin received her Doctorate of Architecture from the University of Michigan and a Bachelor of Architecture from Lawrence Tech and a Master of Arts in History and a Bachelor of Science in Education from Wayne State. Uh, prior to working at Lawrence Tech, Rochelle was an assistant professor at Kansas State University and visiting professor at the University of Nebraska and an adjunct professor at the University of Michigan. Uh, in her years at Lawrence Tech, she served on numerous university and college committees along with founding the university's Ta Sigma Delta chapter. And a published author, she served on many thesis juries and enjoyed researching the impact of film and media on architecture. Uh, and as it says here, Rochelle will be highly, was highly respected and greatly missed. Uh, I have to admit, I received this uh, statement, which is very accurate. Um, and I realized that uh, I've read this one first uh, when I received it, and I thought, that doesn't even even though it's a chronological kind of list of the highlights, it doesn't even kind of come close to the way that we felt about her and the impact that we know that she made. And then I opened the second document uh, that was sent to me, which was a statement uh, from a student, uh, Jennifer Brulet, who emailed me, or emailed the university upon hearing of Rochelle's passing. And I think the, this actually is, is kind of what Rochelle was about, and I think this is what we're here for today. So I want to read uh, what this statement sent, uh, what this uh, student said. I really wish I could be at Rochelle's memorial today because I feel like I owe her so much. Having returned to Lawrence Tech after completing my undergraduate degree over 12 years ago, I was grateful to learn that Rochelle was still teaching here as she was such a positive influence on me so many years prior. It's uncommon to find someone who is really so passionate and who expresses that enthusiasm the way that she did. I remember sitting in the auditorium for the first class I ever had with her, and she gave her lecture accompanied by a dualescent tone of a minister pounding over the speakers. I thought, who is this little white-haired pixie? She knew how to grab your attention and captivate you throughout her entire lecture. She radiated an approachability that made you want to stay after class and talk to her to learn more. That was evident from the students that would crowd around her after her lectures. She was like a rock star at LTU. That's because she had the gift for creating an atmosphere of learning where you knew you could ask her anything without fear of feeling ridiculous. In a profession filled with so many knowledgeable people, there are only a handful who can educate with so little pretension and so much enthusiasm. Her enthusiasm for architecture was truly infectious and it made many of her students strive to achieve more. That's evident from the competitions her students have won and from those who have gone on to practice in the profession and she <clears throat> that she was so passionate about. I think, though, that her legacy, beyond being a gifted thinker and a valued mentor, would be that, most importantly, she was the kind of person who was devoted to teaching and helping her students learn and to love architecture. I'm honored to have been able to call her a friend, 
I will miss her and all of the things that I had yet to learn from her. We have lost a treasure. But if for one, I am so lucky and grateful that she shared a bit of her knowledge and so much of her passion and enthusiasm with me. Rochelle, you will be missed. Um, I just wanted to share briefly before I finish up. I was in uh, Paris this summer teaching the studio and she emailed me and said, I'm feeling much better. Uh, when you return, I have lots of new ideas to try out on the students, like you were guinea pigs. Uh, I want to share them with you and I also have a pile of books. So when she passed, I learned that I wasn't the only person that went to lunch with her every semester, and I wasn't the only person that every time she saw you, she'd give you a stack of books. So I think that's the key, is that she always felt like, or made you feel like you were the only person there. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. I would like to call next, uh, as a representative of the Faculty Council of the College of Architecture and Design, Professor Steve Ross. Nice to see everybody here. This is, we should have introductions. Everybody should say hello to each other, but we'll do that afterwards. Uh, as the Dean said, I'm, I'm standing here uh, to, as the uh, faculty council chair. And Rochelle served as uh, the vice chair uh, with me this uh, semester. Uh, was she the vice chair last semester as well? Yes. yes. OK. So it wasn't just me she loved, everybody. But she was very helpful. But I was thinking about uh, uh, my task today and how I could represent faculty council and try to separate what faculty council meant, or Rochelle meant to faculty council from me personally, and of course the students and the alumni, and it's impossible. And uh, first I'd like to just uh, say that uh, there was no way that I could write all these thoughts down. I started, I stopped, I started. Uh, you know, it's been a couple weeks since she died, and uh, you know, these, I've rewritten this talk in my head at least seven times. So if you can kind of look into my eyeballs now and kind of read my mind, you, you'll get exactly what I was thinking. But this morning it came uh, a little clearer to me. It's not going to be at all clear, totally clear, but I, was every, I try every morning to go to the gym and shoot baskets and it's an opportunity for me to clear my mind and focus on my task for the day and more often than not it's Maybe I'm trying to uh, separate myself from some anxiety or some anger. But this morning, I was thinking happy thoughts. And, and because I was thinking about what I was going to talk about today about Rochelle. And they were all very positive uh, uh, thoughts. So uh, I, th I think maybe that's a lesson I can learn uh, for the next time I shoot baskets. Um, I did realize during, uh, during this little shoot around that I probably would not have been involved with uh, the faculty council, faculty senate, any kind of leadership role if it weren't for the confidence that Rochelle had in me. And, and I realized when you gave the bio that she started in 1986, that was the first year of my full-time tenure track contract. And so we started around the same time. And so I feel, uh, in, in reflecting back that she always had the confidence that I could do something that I never thought I could do. If you knew me back then, I was this very quiet, unassuming um, bookworm. That's not true. But anyway, I was very quiet. <laughs> uh, I was a very quiet person. And uh, she was able to draw that out in me. So uh, that's the equivalence I could make, at least as how her role uh, in faculty council played. Uh, she was always looking for, um, she cared about quality and she was not interested, she deplored mediocrity. It was something she would not at all uh, tolerate. And, and if, if there was that, she would just remove herself. You know, she wouldn't maybe not put herself in harm's way, but she would just uh, distance herself from that. But when it came to something that she cared about, 
and she saw potential. And this is faculty council, this is faculty senate, this is in the classroom, uh, this is in her art. She would pursue it with uh, uh, total unabandonment. Um, she was always looking for the most productive approach. So getting to the point, she, even though she, she taught theory, which sometimes goes around in circles or sees things in ob obtuse ways or obscure ways, I think in her manner of working, it was always trying to get from point A to point B most efficiently. So when she was helping me edit a paper I was working on, I had more you know, red, um, red lines than, uh, than actual text that uh, was left behind. Uh, so that's probably it for the faculty council connection. But uh, there's some other things, that, like I said, I can't separate myself from, uh, uh, from this whole situation. And this weekend I was reading uh, some books. I'm preparing a paper. And I was reading Roland Barthes. And I've, I'm okay with it. But I got to this point, this chapter on mythology. And, and it was just a reflex action. The first person I would call would be Rochelle. You know, and she would be so willing to help out and not make me feel like I didn't, like I, you know, because I didn't understand it. She, uh, she never made me feel as if I was, um, she would never belittle me for that. She would always take a very um, uh, steady approach to uh, helping me out. So I felt, um, I felt good because I thought of her when I was working on this, but also felt abandoned in a way. Um, also, and you may, it wasn't mentioned in, in the bio, but she was involved in an organization that we co-started with a few other people in the room, I think, uh, called FLAC Detroit. And it was an arts and design organization that uh, penetrated uh, the psyche of um, Detroit, the suburbs, Pontiac, and reached out to other countries because we had contributors in, in art and ex design exhibitions from all over the world. And uh, that, I'm sure, played into her teaching, uh, motivated her teaching, motivated her, uh, her writings and her exhibitions, her own exhibitions. So lastly, before I uh, read a reflection by a, a former faculty member, uh, lastly, just want to just say something uh, to the students who are in the room. Uh, she was inspired by you and you motivated her. To the faculty, she cared about those who cared. And to the alumni, you were her lifeline to the outside world. Uh, a, couple of, uh, a couple of days ago, I got a letter from um, a friend of mine, a friend of ours, uh, Tom Berry, who was a faculty member here. He an uh, important person in my life. Uh, he was my architect in a project that I had in Massachusetts award-winning, AIA award-winning project. Um, he was a colleague. Uh, we worked on exhibition, or not exhibitions, but, uh, well, that too, uh, curriculum committee, and uh, we taught together. And uh, so I emailed him to let him know of Rochelle's uh, passing, and so he immediately replied with these thoughts, and if you don't mind, I'll, I'll read these and I'll be done. Uh, reflections by Tom Berry, who is, by the way, well, was department chair of uh, architecture at uh, North Carolina State. Rochelle chaired the search committee that brought me to Lawrence Tech in 1993. I remember our phone call before my visit and the friendship we almost immediately formed. LTU was my first tenure track appointment and throughout my nine years, Throughout my nine years there, Rochelle was my mentor. We had regular lunches, uh, which were intimate occasions to share the books we were reading, <laughs> uh, the research we were pursuing, and our current teaching passions. Rochelle had an expansive intellect and a wonderful openness to the world. She taught me a lot. She especially taught me that within the multifaceted roles we play as educators, it was the students who gave meaning to it all. She was dedicated to her students, all of them, and had a deserved reputation as an 
often outspoken, advocate for, the, for their best interests, the challenging teacher, and, the generous caring, and a generous, caring person. In these contexts, she could get angry about what she saw as limitations, misperceptions, and misaligned, uh, misallocations that limited the intellectual growth of students and faculty. In many, in, in many indigenous faiths, death is viewed, at least in part, as a transition within the con continuality of life and death and of spirit. For many, the ancestors are still present, still part of their out ongoing cultures. When someone we have loved dies, part of us dies as well. And part of, a, part of them lives on within us. In this way, Rochelle's is ever present in all the students, faculty, and friends whose, live, whose lives she has touched and enriched. Thank you, Steve. I would like to next call on Professor Dan Farrow, Chair of the Department of Architecture. Dan? Good afternoon. I'm honored today to be able to speak on behalf of the Architecture Department with respect to uh, final tributes for Dr. Rochelle Martin. I have two brief statements that I'll be reading, one from a present colleague who has found this too difficult to uh, statement to make herself today, and another from a former colleague at another institution, and I'll close briefly with a few remarks. Thank you. On behalf of Gretchen Marikak, uh, she states the following. I have known Rochelle Martin for 40 years. We were classmates in the architecture program at LTU many years ago. She loved her family, her many friends, her students, her cats Coco and Smokey, her books, and good adventures that she could find in, most, in the most unlikely places. She was a good conversationalist and an astute listener. She was perceptive and understood what people needed. She was a good mentor. She was generous. She could be stubborn at times. She would sacrifice for the comfort of others. She was constructively critical, was a good judge of character, and could not be fooled. She had an amazing amount of patience. She loved to travel, especially to New York. She enjoyed Cour Royale, gourmet, gourmet cooking, and was very particular about the restaurants she frequented. She loved antiquing and used bookstores. She enjoyed movies. She loved red or turquoise beads and jewelry and appreciated classic fashion. She preferred mid-century furnishings. She was a staunch Democrat and was passionate about politics and worldly, world affairs. She loved the sun, Sunday New York Times. She would cut out cartoons from the New Yorker magazine. She had favorite charities she would contribute regularly. Rochelle was effervescent, she sparkled. She found peace and solitude working in her well-manicured garden. She advised me on my dissertation. She didn't really like to shop, but I could talk her into it. We were a two-person book club, would swap murder mystery books and review them. We spent hours at her dining room table just talking. I miss our nightly conversations. Rochelle has been a, a constant in my life, and her death has left my heart broken. Her life, life was much bigger than this brief paragraph. And the second comes from David Chasco, former colleague and now chair of the architecture program at the University of Illinois. Rochelle was a unique individual. I, among many, counted her as a friend and a colleague. However, it did not start out that way. Coming out of the profession, she was not initially supportive of my hiring. But later, she was able to mend fences over time with him. And she regarded him as one of the, to be included among the faculty here at Lawrence Tech. We shared a common goal the power of design to create a built environment that enhanced society's ability to progress in meaningful and caring ways, and that she was special. Rochelle understood that architecture had the power to transform the society intellectually. She understood that while many could create credible built artifacts, urban districts, landscapes, 
to serve man's needs. Rochelle knew that architects alone could create unique, unique, powerful, as well as humbling moments where the results literally advance the intellectual capacity of society such that the architecture defines society. Over my eight years as director of the School of Architecture, I had invited a good number of outside guests to visit and participate in our graduate design reviews. Rochelle was one of the very first that I invited. She loved participating and seeing the school. Everyone appreciated her comments. She was magnificent. In closing my own thoughts, I know that uh, Dr. Martin was highly regarded as the senior theorist and, theory, and senior studio credit, credit, critic for, and instructor for the architecture program for many years. Um, I know she was highly regarded clearly by a number of others. I hopefully we'll be able to hear from some of them today. And personally, I found her, her comments that she would have made to me supportive. I always found her a very pleasant person to, do, to address um, and to and, and interactions with her. And I know that she was very supportive of a number of faculty and mentored them over the years as well. I'm sure that her legacy will be missed here at Lawrence Tech. And my condolences to her family and friends. Thank you. Well, our provost, Maria Vaz, would have been here, uh, uh, but she had to contend with a family emergency this morning. Her son uh, was rushed to the hospital with an emergency appendectomy, so we can forgive her. We can forgive her not being here, but uh, she is represented today uh, by the associate provost, Dr. Alma Port. Good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, Dr. Vaz, as you know, is not here. Uh, Dr. Walker is also unable to attend, so it's my honor to represent the view of the administration on Rochelle's passing. Uh, Merrily, I understand, will be watching this video in New York, so we extend our condolences to you as well. All of us, or many of us, in elementary school were required to memorize Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. And the lines that still resonate with me the most after all these years paraphrased, are these. People will not remember what we say here, but they will never forget what they did here, with the emphasis on the they. Most of us don't have the opportunity within a three-day period of time, such as what happened at the Battle of Gettysburg, to make an imprint, a mark, for eternity. That doesn't happen. All of us, on the other hand, rather seed and grow over a long period of time what others perceive as our net contribution to our colleagues, to our students, and to the university. And that was indeed the case with Rochelle teaching here for 25 years. These contributions over time wind up being highly reflective of the individual, of their values, of their character, of their capabilities and of their commitment to students. So from outside the college, the view of Rochelle is strikingly similar to those that have been expressed already. She was caring, she was committed, she was professional, she insisted on excellence, and she was always gracious and always an excellent colleague. All of us here will miss her. We know that all of you miss her on a more personal level than many from outside the college. But her students will miss her most. And that loss will be rediscovered over time as other of her students learn of her passing. And each time that loss is rediscovered, they will reflect on her contribution so that over time, all of us will not forget what she did here. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Our final prepared comment is from Micah Santos, who is representing alumni. Micah. Uh, I apologize for having to read notes. If I didn't have them, I'd probably end up crying in front of my own professors in a room full of strangers. I don't want a repeat of what happened during my thesis presentation. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
My name is Micah Santos. I was a student here from 99 to 2005. I met a lot of people during my time here, and I can honestly say that there's not one person that I kept in touch with more at LTU than Rochelle. I met her during IDS1, and she made such a great impression on me that I think I took just about every class she taught all the way to my master's. I got to be a part of FLAC, where we created videos and installations and tried to educate people about architecture and Detroit. Every other month or so, she would have dinner with me and my wife. Whenever I had any good news, she would be one of the first people I'd call because I knew that she would be genuinely happy to hear about it. She was my mentor here at school and in life, but more than that, she became a real friend. I am a better person because of her. This is a better school because of her. And a few months ago, she just casually told me something that I don't think I'll ever forget. <clears throat> she told me that she looked at my success as her success. And for me, it stressed even more the fact that she cared. Because she really did care about her students. And she always went above and beyond what was expected of her. <coughs> to those who have been her students in the past, try to hold on to the things that you've learned from her. Think back to those moments when it seemed less like a professor trying to teach you something and more like a friend trying to help you achieve your potential. To her colleagues, you would instantly make the school better if you tried to be just a little bit more like her. And I hope that you would help in trying to fill in the void that her passing has created. She made a, a lasting impact in my life. And I'm sure many of you can say the same thing. She may not be around anymore, but her memory will live on in the lives that she's touched. It would be such a great tribute to Rochelle if we could take what we've learned from her and turn that into something great so that our success can continue to be her success long after she's gone. I already, I already miss her. And I'm glad that I've had the opportunity to be her student and her friend. And if I could say one thing to her, I'd just say thank you for caring. Uh, thanks for being my mentor, and thanks for being my friend. Thank you, Micah. Uh, we've now come to the point in our program uh, where we have some two open microphones. I'm going to ask Kate to take one of them, and I will have one of them. And uh, anyone that would like to add to the discussion, uh, in terms of your sentiments, a story, or anything else, uh, the microphone is yours. Tom. Hi, I'm uh, Tom Ashland, and um, I don't have a lot of uh, rhetoric or a dissertative eulogy to uh, talk about. But I can say this, that uh, Rochelle, on a personal level, was a good friend of mine. We were best of friends for about 30 years, and I, I miss her very much. Hi, I'm Jay McBride. I'd just like a show of hands um, to ask how many people, I'm, I'm, I've kind of felt guilty about this over the years, never returned the books that Rochelle uh, loaned to them. <laughs> you know, I, I've got two of them still. Yeah, that's it? Nobody else, you guys? You resell them on eBay? Or, anyway, um, my, I've been here 11 years, and the first semester I was here, uh, I had five um, component um, classes and ideas, five of them. And um, Rochelle, I think I was one of the, uh, uh, my team teachers as well as Dan Farrow and Ed Olowski and Paul Wong, see all you guys here. And um, Rochelle taught me, um, so I was thrown into the fire and Rochelle taught me uh, the importance, this sounds so basic, but the importance of having objectives when you teach. And um, she also taught me that uh, 
It's really about developing a working relationship with each student. And, and in order to do that, you have to um, bring some of yourself into the, um, into the formula and you know, not create a uh, sort of a mask of unapproachability. Although I started here in, in 1986 as an adjunct, I didn't really get to know Rochelle well until the last few years uh, when we served on faculty council together. And I began to understand what a wonderful person that she was. She was very supportive of me. She was a wonderful lady. I know a few of us, she shared when her, she lost her mother last year, she shared some of her jewelry with us, which I'm wearing my piece today because I think it was very special of her. I shared this poem with her family and I'd like to read it here. In memory of Rochelle Martin, who sailed away October 2011, temporarily lost to us, now eternally with our Lord. This is an anonymous poem. I am standing upon the seashore. A ship at my side spreads her white sails to the morning breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength, and I stand and I watch her until at length she hangs like a speck of white cloud, just where the sea and the sky embrace with one another when someone at my side says, there, she's gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that is all. She is just as large and massed in hull and spar as she was when she left my side. I'm sorry. And just as able to bear her load of living freight to the place of destination, her diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at the moment when someone at my side says, there, she's gone. There are other eyes watching her coming. And other voices ready to take up the glad show. Here she comes. Uh, I actually <clears throat> have another testimonial that was sent to me to read and I'll try to fumble through comments of my own. You know, Mike, Micah was worried about crying in front of old professors. Imagine uh, what it's like to be a middle-aged man in this situation. <laughs> I got students here and they're like, oh man, we thought he was cool. Now he's just a bad guy. Um, <clears throat> I heard of Rochelle's passing. I was out of town actually in Philadelphia at a conference. And uh, there were a few people that I contacted who I knew um, needed to know this, these news, uh, this news. Uh, one of which was a former student uh, and friend of both Rochelle's and myself, Jean-Marie Josine, uh, who, uh, along with his wife, Melissa, is currently living and practicing in Chicago. Uh, I had asked Jean-Marie, uh, sort of at short notice yesterday, if there was anything he'd like me to share today, and he uh, put together the following statement. I met Rochelle Martin when she was a guest reviewer from her IDS1 class. The following semesters, I interacted with her in the hallways of the College of Architecture and Design. A few semesters later, I signed up without hesitation for Rochelle's IDS3 class, where our real friendship began. Rochelle was everything a student could ask for. She was a mentor, a role model, a friend, and most of all, a wonderful human being. She inspired her students and her friends to achieve their best and to pursue thoughtful ideas. After graduation in the spring of 2002, my friendship with Rochelle endured as she became even more supportive of the next phase of my architectural education as a graduate student at the University of Michigan. I would periodically share my ideas with her over email or short phone calls. The summer prior to starting my thesis research, she was the first one I turned to for help brainstorming and establishing the goals of my thesis. 
After school, my decision to move to Chicago was influenced by Rochelle's well-timed advice received during an impromptu visit to her house. Since then, I stayed in touch with Rochelle, sharing my work and my life events. I was looking forward to seeing her at my wedding last year in Michigan, but as I now know, due to her illness, she was unable to make the wedding. Learning of Rochelle's passing has left a void which will not be easily filled. I pray that she is at peace and knows how much she has missed. I hope to embody the lessons she passed on to me throughout my future, future professional development. If I manage to follow her last advice to me and decide to pursue a teaching position, I will do so with the hope that I can pass on the lessons that she so eloquently shared with me and in so doing continue her legacy. Rochelle, thank you for everything. I miss you already. Um, and I think Jean-Marie's sentiments and much of what we've heard speak to um, kind of the essence of who Rochelle was and the mark she left for many of us. Um, my first contact with her came in 1994, uh, almost on a dare uh, from a friend of mine. I had submitted an application for a tenure track position here at Lawrence Tech. I had never taught before. And I knew that I was not going to get the position. They gave it to some Chasco guy, I think you might have heard of him. Um, but shortly after the process, I received a phone call at my office at the time I was working at Luckenbach Ziegelman from Rochelle Martin. And Rochelle told me, uh, it's senior application, and you're not ready to be a full-time teacher, but what we see here and what I saw there, I think you'd be an excellent adjunct, and I'd like to pass your name along to Betty Lee Hepworth uh, as a potential adjunct. And I said, okay, um, which led to getting a phone call from Betty Lee, which I unwittingly agreed to come in and teach a class within a week. It was. It was pretty whirlwind. Um, in the time that I spent as an adjunct and on the tenure track, uh, Rochelle took me under her wing, as she has done with so many of us, and mentored me. Uh, when I would put together proposals for pa conference papers, you, know, you have to perish or publish if you're tenure track, I knew that Rochelle was the first person who had to see it. If it could pass muster with Rochelle, then I knew it was something that had merit. Um, like many others, um, you know, I, I do, yes, Jane, I have one of Rochelle's novels at home. Um, and, uh, when will there be good news? And uh, ironically, uh, Rochelle never gave me books on architecture. It was always, you really need to read this novel or you'd really enjoy this. Uh, she came to me one day and she said, I brought you my favorite movie. And I was expecting her to pull out of her bag something by Fellini or by Bergman, something of, of you know, great artistic magnitude. Uh, but that night I sat home and enjoyed The Big Lebowski, which I'd never <laughs> seen before. And so, I, I mean, when I think about that movie, you know, Rochelle abides, trust me. Um, there are sort of three things, I guess, three thoughts that I have that I, I take away from the time that I know knew Rochelle and um, that I think are, are really some of the great attributes of her and the great lessons of Rochelle that go beyond teaching people about making buildings and stuff like that. Um, first of all, the, you know, if I had to find two words that would describe Rochelle in my mind, the first one was young. Um, I've never met a younger person in my entire life. Um, her natural sense of inquisitiveness, her, her desire to always learn, to always be active. Um, you know, it just, it, it was always amazing to me that someone 20 plus years my senior always had twice as much energy as I did. And um, that was really what Rochelle was about. She was not, it was gonna take something really big to stop her. 
because she had no reason to stop on her own. Second word is mischievous. Um, the description earlier from, I believe it was Jennifer, the, you know, the white-haired pixie, I mean, that was Rochelle to a T. Um, she was a troublemaker, and she reveled in that, but she wasn't a bad troublemaker. She just, you know, she found the irony, the humor in things, the ridiculousness in things. Um, you know, any of my colleagues who've been here for a while, you know, the, you know before Glenn's arrival, we sit in faculty meetings, and um, Rochelle and I always would catch eyes when the word proactive would come up, and we'd have to stifle giggling fits. Um, again, just those little things. Um, you know, the, there was a sense of fun troublemaking that she liked to bring to everything. And I think we, you know, those of you who were involved in FLAC with her, you know, what FLAC was about was fun troublemaking in many ways, I think. Her approach to architecture and teaching was fun troublemaking. And it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. <laughs> Lastly, <coughs> a, um, Rochelle was someone that I used to think of as a person that could carry burdens with great grace. And I've, I've come to amend that phrase, because I don't think it's accurate. Um, after her husband, Marshall, passed away, um, Rochelle found herself caring for their daughter, Marilee, by herself. And in her later years, also caring for her own mother. Three incredibly strong-willed women in the same house. I've got one. I can't handle her. <laughs> and I always thought it was amazing that she could, she could carry those burdens. And it, it, I came to realize that, that that was an incredibly inaccurate statement. Because Rochelle didn't see burdens. Rochelle saw the gifts. You know, because it wasn't just Marilee and her mother that she took care of. She took care of us. You know. and she, was, she was kind of a mom figure, at least to me. Especially after the passing of my own mother. And I think there are there, I see heads nodding in agreement. And the fact that Rochelle had that kind of energy for her family, for her colleagues, for her friends, and certainly for her students, um, speaks to the fact that what I think was very important to her, I apologize, I'm talking a long time, but I've got a lot of stuff bottled up, um, is that Rochelle really was teaching us a lesson about caring for other people. And it's never a burden when you can do something for someone else. It's never a burden when you can teach, when you can mentor, um, when you can just cheer somebody up. And I think in these days, we all kind of need a little bit of that from each other because the one we always counted on to do it isn't here anymore, at least not physically. Um, so, um, this is where I'm supposed to come up with some really clever thing to say to tie it all up. I don't have it. Um, but I encourage you all to kind of care for one another a little more because that's really the gift that Rochelle gave all of us. Thank you. So someday we'll have to psychoanalyze why the big Lebowski. Uh, I think she, maybe she saw a little bit of the dude in you. I <laughs> that. Other comments? Thank you, Constance. Hello. Um, can, can anyone hear me? No? Uh, my name is Constance Boduro, and um, it seems appropriate to follow Ed. Ed has been a wonderful mentor to me. And I've come to understand uh, that that's probably because Rochelle was a wonderful mentor to him. Um, I wrote things down because I didn't think I could be extemporaneous. Um, it seems uh, too sadly familiar to be here once again. 
um, mourning the loss of another colleague, um, and not just another colleague, but a, an intelligent, strong, beautiful woman. And uh, I normally wouldn't make that distinction, um, but I think it's an important descriptor, descriptor of both uh, Virginia and Rochelle. They did the hard work. They cut the path through the, uh, the dense woods of architectural teaching, research, and practice uh, for the rest of us, both women and men, to, uh, to follow. Uh, but importantly, they, as they continue to make that path, um, both of them also took time to look back and make sure that we were keeping up with them or trying to keep up with them. Uh, Rochelle was many things to all of us. Um, when I first began teaching here, I didn't really have much interaction with Rochelle. I actually uh, misunderstood her a bit. I thought she was very judgmental of me as a young faculty member. Um, but I was wrong about that. Um, when um, when um, I was um, interviewing uh, for the uh, tenure track position. She was actually very supportive of my candidacy. She, uh, I credit her for helping me decide uh, between accepting the Lawrence Tech position and another offer I had at the time. Uh, so to me, Rochelle was a generous mentor, collaborator, and friend. Uh, she often offered me sage, unsolicited advice, uh, some of which I've followed, some of which I'm, uh, I've yet to follow. Here's some examples. It is hard to do anything by yourself. Lay low. You need a better hairstyle. And I know it's our instinct to talk about ourselves and our relationships with Rochelle, but I wanted to really talk about Rochelle and speak about one particular aspect of her amazing and energetic spirit uh, Rochelle was a Detroiter. Rochelle was born and raised in the city of Detroit, and uh, she was very proud of this pedigree. Uh, Rochelle's sister Eleanor, uh, when I talked to her uh, two weeks ago, told me that while she was here, uh, she was able to visit um, their childhood home, which their father had actually built in Detroit, and, and that brought back a lot of happy memories uh, for her growing up in the city, and it helped her mourn um, the loss of her sister. So Rochelle loved Detroit, and she wanted her students, um, many of whom are here, I'm really happy to see, she wanted her students to, uh, to see the city, to be exposed to the city, and also to experience it the way she did, with, with really all of their senses. Um, each time that we collaborated on a design studio, uh, she, she was definitive. She wanted a site in Detroit, and not just any site. She really focused on neighborhoods um, that were in need of design intervention at all scales, human, architectural, and urban. And uh, last year it was Milwaukee Junction. This year she wanted Cass Corridor, uh, but we ultimately agreed to Capitol Park um, for the studio. So these site selection exercises with Rochelle are kind of my fondest memories. Uh, we'd meet on a Sunday morning, typically, uh, very early. She was an early riser. And we'd drive around the city investigating different neighborhoods and sites. We'd discuss, photograph, go back, revisit. And we'd narrow down you know, which, which site we'd want. Uh, then we'd go to brunch. This is a very important part of the site selection exercise. Uh, often we'd wind up at Woodbridge Pub, um, and always for Bloody Marys and uh, debriefing. So um, as a matter of fact, one of the last things that Rochelle said to me was that she was looking forward to being off her medication so that um, she could have a bloody. But uh, these uh, brunches, uh, sometimes with Marilee joining us, uh, are some of my fondest memories. Uh, so now, now that she's gone, and actually I have to admit, only now it seems real. Um, I'm not going to have another bloody without thinking about her. 
I'm not going to move around the city without thinking about her. But as um, Mike has said, and many of you have, have the same sen sentiment, I think that in tribute to her that I'll, I'll try to be just a fraction of the teacher and mentor that she was. Would anyone else like to speak? Good afternoon. I'm Ralph Nunez. I'm adjunct here. <clears throat> One of the, the really nice tributes, I mean, listening to everyone who's had her as a mentor, as an instructor, as a colleague, um, one of the things that I've noticed, uh, just not only this afternoon, but her infectious smile that's on the, the board up front, no matter where you saw her, no matter what you were doing, that smile was always a constant. Whether she was in a crit room and going through a dissertation with a student or working with you on one-on-one -on -one, as she did with me on one of the uh, faculty uh, assignments that I had the privilege of working on. Two days before she took her leave of absence, I was in my studio, and the studio to the left of me was vacant. And there's Rochelle sitting in a vacant st studio. And I'm thinking, OK, well, she's here to help my students. That's great. And I'm looking at her, and her head's down on the table. And I'm like, OK. And so I went over, Rochelle, you OK? She looked up, and she said, yeah, I'm just, I'm just really, really tired. Now, with the passing of her mother, and I've met her mom and her, her lovely daughter, um, again, had brunch at uh, Beverly Hills Grill, which was another, another one of her spots that she loved. Uh, you know, with all the difficulties that she had, she never let on the fact that she was as ill as she was. Um, and that was the smile that she gave me. She said, you know, I'm just really tired. I need some time. I had, I was that concerned that I asked Sally the next day. I said, did you see Rochelle? I said, I looked at her. She doesn't look well, but she's not saying a word. And the next day, Sally told me in confidence, well, she's been having trouble uh, medically and that she's taking leave of absence. It's that bro brief moment that I have, that interaction of just that talk back and forth, which is what is so precious that I had with her in just a minute versus the times that some of you have had hours and hours to spend. And it's one thing that we should make sure that we treat each other with that type of respect and with that type of dignity that we have those type of memories. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. Well. I'm probably one of the few people here who uh, knew Rochelle when she had brown hair. <laughs> she was one of my students. And when she was one of my students, we talked a lot because we were a lot closer in age. She practiced critical theory as a student, working with a professor and questioning what he had to say without making him feel like a fool. Remarkable talent. The one thing that Rochelle left me with, and I hope all of you with, is when she was my student, she had a sense of wonder. And she never, ever lost it. But she passed it along, and she shared it with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Will. OK, so um, I'm Lisa Sove. Um, I actually just took over Rochelle's studio, and she's been my mentor since we first met um, when I was in her studio not so long ago. Um, but based on all of um, what people have said, I want to kind of reflect on what Marilee had dubbed her nickname as a space cadet. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I thought about how Marilee had, had given her that name as 
something that Rochelle would kind of flake out and lo lose attention of what Marilee was saying. But in fact, her spacing out was her way to kind of free think and free associate and move beyond what we were saying to her, to be a deep listener. And at the same time, she was a cadet. She wasn't the pilot. She was, she was always learning and training. Even to the end, she was putting her foot into new areas and trying to learn and, and bridge gaps. And I think that, that is the lesson, is that we can all, we can all learn um, as we move forward and never stop. Luckily, she never had to retire, and she got to move all the way to the end. And so um, I'm glad to now be like a cadet in training under her and that we can all kind of be kind of space cadets in her honor. So that's. She said, I'd love to teach. And so right off the bat, we talked about what kind of a thesis would be appropriate. It turned out to be a study of the impact of the physical design on the learning of youngsters in elementary school. Rochelle was a tenured art instructor in the city of Detroit for nine years before she came here. And she brought that background and credentials to allow her to, to do this study. We studied three buildings, one which had been, in one school district, one which had been recently renovated at a very large cost by a design office that you would recognize so that the interior of this school was really quite special. Another one where the PTA did the renovations. They had timelines, they had graphics in various places. And then a third school, which was just Dullsville. Anyway, with the approval of the superintendent and the principals, we interviewed the students or she interviewed the students, and was looking for a correlation between design excellence and either achievement in the academic achievement or attendance, or if we couldn't find it there, at least an attitude. So we went through this entire study, <clears throat> and we came back and we could find no correlation with attendance and no correlation with attitude. But there was a correlation between achievement. The kids in the dull school did the best. Now, this caused her to absolutely panic. Uh, <clears throat> she says, all right, I've done this entire study, and you know what? Anyway, I suggested that she talk with some educational psychologists, and she went out and interviewed a number of them who basically told her, I could have told you that would have happened. And anyway, I guess the message that, that I would, would share with you is how she handled a shock, uh, a, a unexpected. She ended up presenting the, uh, <clears throat> I don't know what I did. I don't think I did anything. Hold the button down. Hold the button down. Let's see what we're going to do. We're going to change microphones. All right. Anyway, we uh, uh, submitted her uh, uh, final thesis to the Environmental Design Research Agency. Uh, and uh, they accepted it as a presentation, so she went down to the National Conference and presented her thing, then she went on to Michigan for her doctorate, and the rest is history. So it's been my privilege to not only teach with her, but to help her on her way. Thank you, Jim. I'm uh, Mark Novis, and I'm one of her alums, one of her many thesis advisees. And uh, one thing I just want to reiterate, Professor Olowski's comments about giving nature, that it really wasn't a burden. Uh, she had the remarkable ability to reach out, to engage, and to inspire each of us uh, in, our, in the best way that would, would uh, work for us, and made us each feel like we were the only one and the most important. And as I hear today, the story is about folks sitting in the very same chair that I probably sat at her dining room table and going to the same restaurants and reading the same books. Um, I just think what a phenomenal legacy that she's touched so many thousands of lives in, in the same way and that uh, this community now, we all kind of have that in common, it is uh, Rochelle. Thank you. Any other comments? I actually want to say something to the alumni here uh, really quick that had Rochelle. And this is regarding what you gave her. Um, 
and I haven't thought about this until listening to all of you guys. Um, it was about a year ago we went to one of our, as everybody says, many lunches with books and discussions, but also what generally occurred between faculty was a good old fashioned bitch session. Um, and I was in the middle of a tirade about um, a f another colleague of mine who may or may not be in this room that made a slight about my age or lack thereof, um, maybe thinking I was much younger than I was. And she was grinning the whole time I was bitching. <laughs> and I said, what? She said, well, we're both 25. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? She said, the students keep us young. We're both 25. So what does it matter? And we moved on. So really, that's kind of what you guys gave her and, and hopefully ultimately me. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Ralph. Yeah, Ralph Nelson, the assistant dean. I probably knew Rochelle less than any of you, but one thing that I greatly respected was her sense of courage. And I'm just thinking about her, her young life and the kind of courage she had to have just to step into a discipline that was, I guess, when was she, was she in school, in the 50s, 60s? Something like that. I mean, it just must have been incredibly tough for her, but she seemed to make a smooth transition and have the courage just to take it all on. I think developing an academic career, a connection to the profession uh, during that period of time. And I just found her to be incredibly courageous in expressing her intellect, her creativity, her passion, um, the sense of wonder that people have addressed, and may maybe most importantly, her courage to care. That's it's something I think we too often forget about, but it requires incredible courage to care about others even more than yourself. And um, I think maybe the final expression of courage, which was her courage in her fight with, um, with cancer and courage in death. So. Thank you, Ralph. Just to let you know, um, we are just about uh, done funding and endowing the scholarship for Virginia North. We would like to create another scholarship uh, for students, particularly those that are that are interested in um, in the theoretical development uh, of architecture um, uh, in the field that Rochelle really really pursued um, uh, to to study uh, and provide funds for them in doing this. So we'll be making an announcement at some point in the near future about uh, creating the Rochelle Martin Scholarship Fund. And we hope that everyone here would find some, uh, find some, uh, be generous with their contributions to this. Uh, this does bring to a conclusion the tribute to Dr. Rochelle Martin, and, and um, just want to announce that there will be some refreshments next door in the architecture gallery, and we'd like you to all join us to further reflect in casual conversation, private conversation on the life and the achievements of Professor Martin and her time with us. We thank you all for attending. <laughs>